Hello, today I'm going to be talking about The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Trubosky. Um, I reread this as my first book this year. I think it's really nice to start the year with a reread. Um, and I haven't read it since I was 16, which was a full 10 years ago. And I wasn't sure it was going to hold up, and it really did. It was wonderful. So this was published in 1999, um, and it follows the story of a 15-year-old boy called Charlie. He's writing this um, for him it's 1991 and it's really weird to think that that's just like a whole different generation of teenagers to me uh, but yeah so he, it's 1991 Charlie is 15 um, he is just starting high school and he's very socially awkward the book is in an epistolary format so it takes the form of him writing to some unknown person um, basically just kind of spilling his guts he comes off like a curious innocent child uh, which is kind of sweet a little bit odd but basically he's enormously out of his depth in everything in life and going into high school is no different but when he gets there he meets this boy called Patrick who's a couple years older than him um, and becomes fast friends with him and his stepsister Sam so the whole book is him experiencing having friends for like the second time in his life and coming out of his shell a bit and just like really living as a teenager. This group of friends put on a, I think, monthly performance of the Rocky Horror Picture Show, and they've been doing this for ages. It's such like a group ritual, and when Charlie joins um, the friendship group, he gets to participate in the Rocky Horror Show, and inside the book, it's like he's being nostalgic for the fact that this is a ritual in people's lives, but reading it, you feel really nostalgic for him, and then rereading it, it's just like, it's it's so it's so wonderful having those little things. When I read this when I was 16, it was because I kept seeing it on Tumblr, uh, back in the start of Tumblr, um, and it was all like quotes of, you know, I feel infinite, which is a really like a big element of this book. But I think there's just this this ricochet of um Charlie in the book is nostalgic for this friendship group that he's only just joined, and then I came to the book through other people being nostalgic about the book. And then I felt nostalgic when I read it because Charlie was nostalgic and I feel nostalgic now because I'm rereading it 10 years later. And it's it's sort of like an old friend who you really care about and feel really warmly towards, but you've just sort of, you know, you've moved past that now. And it's really nice to revisit it, but I'm no longer an angsty teenager. <laughs> Hopefully Charlie isn't either. One thing I really liked about this book that I didn't pick up on first reading um, is that I think it presents a view of the social structures in a high school in a very refreshing way. I feel like since, basically since Mean Girls, um, there's this perception of uh, like high school hierarchy, social hierarchies, and that's just kind of been the standard that is portrayed in movies and TV shows. And it's always like, high school is this really scary place where there are the popular kids and you're basically, most, most TV shows that take place in high schools are like from the perspective of someone that isn't part of that and doesn't really have any friends, but it's such like an established structure. I'm reading this, it's like, he went into this big scary place and actually he just like, people were nice. Like there were some people that wanted to be friends with him because he's an interesting guy. And that's like so lovely. Like I remember watching Clueless for the first time and being like, oh, this is a different model of a social structure in a high school. Like you can just be nice to the new person and all get along really well. <laughs> I know that sounds really silly, but for, you know, teenagers that are afraid of maybe not even high school, maybe like going to university and feeling um, like the odd one out and just having complete imposter syndrome. This is the kind of book that's like, oh, you know what, it can all work out even if you've, you know, you're not really ready for it and you've, you know, have some, some difficulties from your past to overcome. Like, it's nice and you can have fun and people can accept you. And that's just a really nice sentiment. If you are in your late 20s, 30s, 40s, maybe don't read this for the first time because, you know, it's not for you. It's for the 16 year olds and it's really good for the 16 year olds. If you read it when you were younger, I would really recommend revisiting it. Um, and if you are younger, if you're like in your teens, this is just a, such a, it's just a delightful book to read. So I thoroughly recommend it. Thanks a lot for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.